Yes, yes, y'all. It don't stop. It's the Amanda Seals Show. I'm Amanda Seals here, and it is time for us to bring up some old ish with our local <laughs> Roundies Parts Blistorian, Ms. Kimberly Renee. What or whom are you going to school us on today? Yes. Well, I got inspired mm. these past couple of weeks by Beyonce. Okay. Okay. Because everybody's been talking about, you know, how Beyonce is topping the charts in country and yes. everyone's like, oh my gosh, this is such a unique thing as if we had <laughs> nothing to do with country music. I was like, oh, okay. So uh, because of this moment, it got me thinking about a woman named Ella Shepard. Amanda, okay. do you know Ella Shepard? No, I don't never know these people. And it's a <laughs> shame that that's why we have you but here. I love this, sis. but I love this moment. I love sharing things with you and I love giving you new information because I know you love that too. Yes, um, I do. So, Ella Shepard also made music history. Um, she was a singer and pianist, composer, born in 1851. Now, she okay. was born on President Andrew Jackson's plantation, the Hermitage Plantation in huh. Nashville, Tennessee. She was his descendant, not his daughter, but a descendant. Now, when she okay. was um, at some point after, I guess, being sold with her mom further down south, she ended up in Mississippi and something really awful happened to her when she was three years old. Her mom was being essentially tortured by her, quote unquote, mistress and ended up attempting to drown Ella, three years mm -hmm. old. Her mom ended up trying to drown her. So she had this mental health breakdown. So Ella's mom ended up um, staying in Mississippi, but Ella's father heard about it and was like, come with me, we're going up to Nashville. So she ended up back in Nashville. So when she got back to Nashville and she was of age, she learned voice, she learned piano, and she started making money locally um, with her music. And she used that money to pay her way into Fisk University. Hmm. Now, that may ring a bell because of the Fisk Jubilee Singers. And so yes. this is the quick story of, of how that came to be. So Fisk was experiencing uh, financial difficulties at the time. And the treasurer, his name was George White, he had this idea, what if we just put together an ensemble, we take the, the, the concert choir that we have, and we take them on tour to raise some money. Well, this concert choir, they were singing um, classical music and the white folks mm -hmm. weren't really feeling that. So they introduced quote unquote, slave songs, Negro spirituals. Now I'm a little bit conflicted here. I'll just be honest because okay. it feels a little weird minstrally? to present, say again. It feels a little minstrally. It, yeah, but but what's, what's interesting is that it wasn't minstrel because this was actually the first time that many white people got to hear mm. black people doing anything that wasn't minstrel because okay. they were so accustomed to the vaudeville, the blackface, they were so yeah. accustomed to all of that. This was the first time that they actually got to sing something and hear something from black people that wasn't that. Okay. But I found it un slightly uncomfortable because I was like this, it feels precious to present such a thing to a white audience, right? Mm -hmm. It feels a little like they're ogling almost. However, I do recognize the value of kind of changing that narrative. And that's what Ella, had an opportunity to do because she was um, not only a singer, but a composer and a pianist for the Fist Jubilee Singers. So they went everywhere from Wales, uh, Ireland, Scotland. They traveled internationally. They were received wow. well. And from that point, um, it went from just this concert choir to now it's inspiring um, the HBCU uh, gospel choir tradition as well, which we know birthed so many other um, genres. And so they ended up raising enough money to save the institution, about $150,000 they brought back to the school. And Ella Shepard became the first black instructor um, at Fisk University. She was their assistant music teacher. What? Um, but that is Ella Shepard. She was the first black instructor at Fisk? First black instructor at an HBCU. She was the first black instructor. Wow. Okay, Ella Shepard, look at learning. Mm -hmm. No idea. No idea. Her story sounds very similar to the character uh, played by Arjun McDonnell in the musical Ragtime. She literally has a whole mm. song about like trying to take her baby's life and she buries it in, in the ground and then the father comes and then the mother mm. has a mental health break and the dad comes and teaches her piano. Daddy played piano. This, played it was, very she well. was not inspired by Ella. Do we know that? 
I have to look it up because once you were telling the story, I was like, this sounds oddly familiar. Music from those hands could catch you like a spell. Yes. Uh, Well, thank you so much once again for bringing us somebody who should be heralded, who should be on bulletin boards during Black History Month and, you know, all year round and yet has, you know, just kind of been tucked away in the annals of American history, not just Black history, American history. So y'all look up Ella Shepard, Ella Shepard of the Fisk Jubilee Singers. Also just learning that she was the first Black instructor at Fisk was also quite interessante. Uh, 